Let us give God some praise. We serve a mighty good God on today. We didn't come here for a funeral, but we came here to celebrate a life well lived. We came to celebrate a man of God. We came to celebrate a hard work of the kingdom. He comes to magnify the Lord for today. He's worthy to be praised. He's the Alpha. He's the Omega. He's the beginning and the end. He's the Sinner Savior. He's the Lord of our soul. And we came here to magnify His name. We can't get a celebrate a life of one of God's servants. Let's give God some praise up in here, up in here. Because God is still worthy. He still sits high. He's still magnificent. He's still wonderful. He's still glorious. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. Psalm 91. Beginning with verse 1. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. The word of the Lord is blessed. The story is told of an old graveyard. And one day, a young man was passing by that old graveyard. And he saw a man come out of the graveyard with a barrel of apples. He was perplexed. So he came back the next day and he saw the same man bring a barrel of apples out of the graveyard. So he decided that if he saw this same man on tomorrow, he would confront him. And like clockwork, the man came out of the graveyard with a barrel full of apples. The man stopped him and said, sir, I watched you for three days come out of the graveyard with a barrel full of apples. We understand that the graveyard is full of gloom and doom. We don't find anything good in the graveyard. But the man said to him, he said, on the other side of the graveyard, there's an apple orchard. There may be death on this side of the graveyard, but there's life on the other side. Can we give God praise because there's life on the other side of the graveyard? And for a few moments, on today, I want to encourage you from the subject, unshakable faith. Unshakable faith. On today, we've gathered to celebrate a life well lived. 
And we have come to acknowledge and pay tribute to the life and the legacy of Brother Abdul Kareem Wright. We come together at this exact moment in time to acknowledge a life lived to the fullest, even in the midst of obstacles. A life lived in the fullest, in the midst of trials. A life lived to the fullest, even through sickness and through many unforeseen tribulations. And what Brother Abdul has left us with is the ultimate example of what unshakable faith looks like even in the midst of unforeseen difficulties and problematic times. I want you to understand that Brother Abdul's unshakable faith truly had a profound impact on those around him. Furthermore, his trust in Almighty God and his commitment to living out his faith should be an inspiration to each and every one of us. Brother Abdul's unshakable faith serves as a source of hope and strength for those going through difficult times on today. Brother Abdul's unshakable faith influenced, not only influenced how people people see God, but it has influenced how we commit ourselves to serve Him. His unshakable faith motivates us on today to continue to keep on living in spite of the difficulty that we might come across. Unshakable faith causes us to do not what we always want to do. But it causes us to do what God wants us to do. Unshakable faith causes us to move when we want to stay stationary or we feel like today's a problem. Unshakable faith causes us to love unconditionally even when from that contrary. Unconditional love causes us to serve in excellence when we don't have to and when we don't want to and we want to take the easy way out. And unshakable faith causes us to do what's right. In a world full of wrong. My brothers and my sisters, this type of faith demonstrated by Brother Abdul is a faith that is tried and tested and can stand the test of time. This unshakable faith is a faith that says, I will not. And I shall not be moved. Unshakable faith is a faith that is rooted and grounded, not in church, but it's rooted and grounded in Jesus the Christ. We come out here today to celebrate the life and the legacy of a man of God. I know our hearts are heavy on today, but we have a right to celebrate this man of God. In our text for today, we understand that the believer is to have confidence in God no matter what comes his or her way. Are y'all with me? We understand that we have confidence in God simply because God is our refuge. Because God is our refuge, 
This mother right lets us know that no matter what we go through in life, God is a sure defense for those who are faithful. Do I got some faithful folks up in the house for the next? He's a sure defense for those who are faithful and those who are dedicated. And if we are dedicated to the cause, we know that God is our refuge, our strength, and a very present help in times of trouble and in times of struggle. Do you understand that God is our safe place? In the midst of difficult times. And we understand that God is our covering. And he protects us in the midst of the violent downpours of life. These violent downpours, my brothers and my sisters, can lead us down the road of despair. Can make us feel anxious and make us feel like all hope is gone. But there's no need to worry. Because God is still in the blessing business. God has promised never to leave us, nor forsake us, so we can have confidence in knowing that God is our shelter. He's a shelter in the time of storm. He's a doctor in the sick room. He's a lawyer in the court room. I don't know if you came to do all the things, but we came here to celebrate a life well lived and magnified the true and living God. And when we understand, yes. we do understand, Mother Right, that sometimes we're going to need protection. And sometimes we're going to need guidance along the way. But see, God has promised to shield us. He's promised us to give us direction yes. so we can effectively move and strategically move in the midst of this process that is ultimately leading us to our purpose. See, there are going to be some Tragic times yeah. in our lives. But family, check this out. The mandate is to still stay connected to God yeah. while y'all stay connected to one another. Still stay committed to God while you remain committed to one another. No matter what life looks like, you are to stay committed. And stay connected in the good times. Committed and connected in the bad times. Committed and connected in the midst of your grief. Committed and connected no matter what life goes your way. But understand that God is our shelter. But we must allow Him to be our shelter. We must allow Him. To be our covering. Yeah. We must allow him to be our safe place. Yeah. And my brothers and my sisters, that demonstrates what I call uh -huh. an unshakable faith. Yeah. So with all of that said, what does having unshakable faith reveal to us in the midst of of what we encounter daily. Number one, having a shakable faith in God as our shelter brings us comfort and peace during difficult times. Number two, a shakable faith in God as our covering enables us to stand firm against the storm of life. Number three, trusting God as our shield provides assurance 
of his faithful protection and guidance in our lives. Yes. Understand on today, we will deeply miss the presence of Brother Kareem Wright. Yes. We can confidently rely on the faithfulness of Almighty God. We will have moments of weariness that sometimes overwhelm us. But we can confidently rely on the faithfulness of Almighty God. There will be times, Mother Wright, when your heart is filled with sorrow. But you can confidently rely on the faithfulness of Almighty God. But my brothers and my sisters, we can rejoice on today because see the songwriter says because he lives I can face tomorrow because he lives all fear is gone because I know that I know that I know he holds the future and see life is worth living because he lives even in the midst of difficult times Mother Wright, we can celebrate because our Savior lives in Jesus. We have joy for today and hope for tomorrow because our Savior lives in the midst of chaos. We have calm in the midst of the storm because our Savior lives in times of uncertainty. We can walk in hope because our Savior lives. Life can be full of challenges, but we can live in the light of love because our Savior lives. Brother Abdu is no longer suffering and he is at rest simply because our Savior lives. Abdul is at rest over there where the streets are paved with gold. He's at rest. Get no more trips to the VA. He's at rest. No more pain. No more heartache. No more hurts. No more ambulances. No more graveyard. But over there, everything will be sunk. And the Sabbath will have no end. We can celebrate on today because God's glory is still our light. We know He's a way out of no way. God's glory is still our light. He's a healer, He's a deliverer, He's the one. Who sets us free? God's glory is still our life. We can praise God for a life well lived. God's glory is still our life. We can dry our tears and be happy for our brother and our friend. God's glory is still our life. We can make and do it for a night. But God's glory is still our light. We know that joy, somebody say joy, comes in the morning. God's glory is still our light. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. But the right, what a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. I want you to know that this friend came through 40 and two generations. This friend was born of a virgin. This friend was wrapped in swaddling clothes. This friend was laid in a manger. See the magi, they came to see him. But Herod tried to take him out. The Bible said he changed water into the best life. He healed the disturbed and he healed the sick. He raised the dead spiritually. 
and he raised the dead naturally. He was a preacher. He was a good teacher. He was the great example. But this friend, he had some haters. They lied on him. They denied him. And they betrayed him. He was falsely arrested. He was abandoned. And he was denied. He was marched from Judgment Hall to Judgment Hall. They mocked my Lord. And they beat him all night long. They put a crown of thorns on his head. And they marched him up Golgotha's hill. They nailed my Jesus to a nobody cross. On the cross, he offered a word of forgiveness. On the cross, he offered a word of salvation on the cross. He didn't forget his mama. He gave a word of anguish and a word of suffering. But lastly, he gave a word. Somebody say it. He gave a word of victory when he laid down his life on Friday evening. He was placed in a marble tomb. He stayed there Friday night, all day Saturday. But the Bible said that early, early Sunday morning, he rose victorious with all power in his hand. Because he lives, family, we can face tomorrow, family, because he lives, because he lives, our doom is healed, because he lives, our doom is delivered, because he lives, our doom is now set free, and because we know Jesus for the future, and life is worth living. Life is worth living. But my life is worth living. Because Jesus lives. Are you happy that he lives? Do you know that he lives? We can walk in the newness of life. We got joy in the midst of sorrow. We got peace in the midst of the storm. All because I say to live. So what does having unshakable faith? Reveal to us in the midst of what we're going through on today. Number one, having unshakable faith in God as our shelter brings us comfort and it brings us peace during our difficult times. Number two, a single faith in God as our covering enables us to stand firm in the midst of the storm of life. And last but not least, trusting God as our shield, it provides assurance of his faithful protection and his faithful guidance every single day of our lives. God said the son. They called him Jesus. He came to love. He came to heal. And he came to forgive. He bled and died to buy my pardon. And if he raised, 
is there to prove that our Savior lives. Tell your neighbor, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all oh, fear is gone. Because I know my Jesus holds the future. In life, my brothers and my sisters, is for living. Because he lives. I'm going to open up the doors of the church right now. Is there anyone who doesn't know Jesus in the part of their sins? We offer you Christ on today. We don't care about what church you from. We don't care about what state you're from. We just want to know when you leave here that you're going for yourself. We can hook you up in the church in your area. But we offer Christ on today. And let me tell you something. We didn't open the doors of the church because the doors of the church have never been closed. So we offer you Christ.